Okay guys, many of you requested me to create a video on installation of MySQL and then how to use MySQL, how to practice the queries in that. So this video, I will demonstrate you how can you download and install MySQL and run some of the SQL queries. How do you upload more data in your database and practice on that data. Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. So what you have to do for MySQL installation is go to Google and type MySQL installer. Okay, so first thing that will come up is a link like this. You have to go here and link will open for Windows X uh, 86 32 bit. So based on your version, you have to download. So you have to click on this download link here that 427.6 MB file. Okay, so once you click on this download, the download will start. It will ask you certain things. No need to log in or sign up for now. So you can say just start my download. Okay. Once you start your download, that file will starting download. So I am just pausing it for now because I have already downloaded one copy of it for interest of time. Okay. So as you can see, I have one copy here in my downloads folder. What next? I will just go and double click on this. Okay. So this is the MySQL installer, which will install multiple uh, parts of MySQL. Okay. I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. So it is just preparing to install. So it comes from Oracle. So as you could see in the previous window, it was showing from Oracle. So it is just taking some time, right? So it asks for uh, whether it, you know, installation confirmation. So I've just given the confirmation gathering required information. So it is just gathering my system information like um, if it has all the needed things, right? So those things it is looking for. I'll just show you a step by step process of what all options to select when you are installing this right and then it should open a new window for me. Yeah, as you can see here my SQL installer 1.4 one new window is opening here. Okay. In this one guys you have to select developer default for now because if we want to install the developer default for practicing purpose right then you can go to next right. And then you will see some of the selected path already exist. I had already uh, installed it. I'm just uh, demonstrating you because I have removed everything that I had installed. So maybe the last version I installed here only. So it will rewrite here only. No problem with that. If you are installing for the first time, it will not show this. Okay. The selected part already exists. Are you want to continue? Yes. Okay. Check requirements. It will check certain requirements in background. Okay. So it needs Microsoft Visual C++ if it has. Let it check the requirements. It says one or more product requirements have not been satisfied. Okay. Now what will happen is when you say, do you want to continue in the background? It will also install those dependencies. Okay. That is the good thing about this. Now you see this window here. So it will install the dependencies. If it still gives you error, what you need to do is you need to install MySQL, uh, Microsoft uh, C++. Okay. It will definitely not show you an error in case it shows you the error. Okay. Now all these components, if you see guys, MySQL server, workbench, notifier, all these things I will install. Okay. I will just say execute. So all these things will install one by one. Okay. So as you can see, MySQL server is installing. So there will be a server and there will be a client, right? So we want to have all these components. We want to have the Python connector. We want to have the workbench. We want to have the .NET connector. Let's say by default, whatever is there, we want to install. Okay. So all these components will install one by one. I will pause this for a moment. And once all these things get installed, then I will go to the next screen to show you how this is working. So the first part is installed now. Okay. So now as you can see guys, all these things are downloaded. Okay. All these things are completed the installation. Okay. Let us move to the next step here. So I'm clicking on next. So as you can see, it is uh, giving us, we will now walk you through configuration wizard for each of these uh, products. So one by one, it will walk us through. Let us see what is there in the next step. So it is asking, do you want a standalone MySQL server or you want a DB cluster kind of thing? So we just need a standalone. So standalone is selected by default here type so no need to change anything here by default it takes port number 3306 which is fine for now don't change anything here okay next it asks for a strong password so it will ask you to set your password let us see so here it will ask you uh, since i told you i had one installation before so root password was already set for me okay 
for you it will come you to set the root password so just give a root password so my root password was 123456 which i had set that time so i am hoping that will work because with the last installation for you give any password of your choice now what is root root is nothing but one of the user the base user for example if you log into database you will need one user right so root is that user you can also add one more user but basic user is root okay so my password last password was correct you need to just set the password give any password okay i'll go to the next step so it tells me stand alone system my sql atv is the service which will run and then apply configuration i will say just execute let it execute different configurations on my system okay for example windows firewall rules and it will just start the mysql server in the background okay updating the start menu link so if you can see right hand side i am getting a notification i was getting that it has started a service in the background so if i go to my windows i will see one service okay so next finish okay next so this is for the other service actually so root i will give my password here 123456 i will say check it is checked now it will go to the next i will say execute it will run the script again okay because this is for a different service so what kind of services are running we are running mysql server we are running mysql client and we are also running the mysql uh, terminal or command line interface okay so let it run i will show you what all are running i will show you the gui okay so if you can see here it will load the gui once this running script gets over okay so let's wait for this to get over as you can see here the configuration for sample and example was successful click finish to continue i am clicking finish it will go to the next let me go to the next and say so it it is asking me two options it is taking by default basically so it will launch one terminal so what you can see here is the terminal or the command line not everybody is comfortable with command line so obviously people are more comfortable with gui graphical user interface so what you see right now on my screen is a graphical user interface for the mysql client okay what i mean by mysql client is so this is the root user i will go to the root user by clicking this so it will open an editor for me okay so in the background mysql server is running in the front end what you can see is the mysql client through which you will connect to the back end server okay other way of connecting to back end server is through the command line which i am not showing you knowingly as most of you will not be comfortable with that okay now what next so few basic commands i want to show you this is the command window actually so there are some default uh, tables already there in the mysql or default database so let me go and say show databases this is the query window actually okay so data bases okay so it should show me what all databases are there in the background i mean previously installed databases so you can see these are the databases information schema my schema my sql sys test is the database which i have created okay how to create a new database you can say create database name of your database for example i say unfold ds okay so a new database will get created database is nothing but a to keep it very simple collection of tables okay so why this is not running create database unfold ds it had run no it's not running create database unfold ds database exists okay okay so let me write so databases so why so database is not running uh, uh, uh. create database unfold ds so databases okay so here we can see unfold database unfold ds is a new database that i have created okay so what the problem was guys i was selecting this command this command is there to run where your cursor is for example if i want to run this query right now this should run this query see it is running if your cursor is here then it will run this line okay if you if you press this and if you want to select something and run then this command okay this gui stuff okay now you have different databases here so suppose i want to create one table in my database unfold ds okay i want to show you how to create a simple table so you can just say create table uh, let us say student table just a name i am giving student table and then you have to give 
name of the columns which you want in the table. For example, I say I and IT ID which should be integer. Then I say name which should be name is a keyword. So I should say name one which should be where care where care means a data type right where care 30. So what I am trying to do through this command is I am trying to create a student table inside my unfold. Okay, if you want to create inside unfold ds, then you have to say like this create table unfold ds dot. Okay, so it will create inside this database. Okay, let us see if this command runs. This command is executed. Now, what I will do, I will just say select star from this table, right? The table which we created. Now, since we have created this table, so I am expecting this table to be empty because we do not have any data in this table as of now right so as you can say this table is empty here how to insert the value in this table the basic way of inserting the value in a table is insert into your table name okay values v a l u u s values and whatever value so first i want to give id id i will give 11 then i want to give name name i will give aman and then right this is one one uh, record that i want to insert let me insert one more record here. Let me run this first and let me insert one more record here. So, I will say 22 and I will say Kumar, right. So, I am manually inserting the records guys. This is not a good, you know, uh, this is not how it happens in industry. I will tell you how it happens in industry. So, two records are getting inserted here, okay. Aman and Kumar that I inserted. Now, how do I select? If I select select star from unfold data science dot student table, those two records will come. If I want to run some query with some condition where ID less than 20. So, which ID is less than 20 guys? The first ID. So, I am expecting only the first record to display here. As you can see only first record is displaying here. This is just one part of how do you create a table? How do you insert the values in table? When you work in any data science project, you get access to client database and then many tables will be there and you need to as I told in my last video you need to fetch the data using select command join command many commands are there right. So, that is how it happens in industry. Now, if you want to create your own table for practicing purposes right. So, as you can see here I have a create table statement here ok. On the internet you can find various create table schema which you can directly use and create table in your database. How do you fill data in that? In the internet you can find various sources where you will get the these type of commands what all values you can put in there. If you run that script it will automatically create a table and put some values on which you can practice. So, I leave it to you just do some research and try to create some table put in some value and do some practice ok. In my next video what I am going to show you is how do you work with python and mysql together. Suppose I want to run this query directly from python. How do I do that? Suppose there is a table in database which I want to consume in python. How do I do that? Those kind of things I will show you how to connect, how to fetch the data, how to push the data in my next video. If you have any doubts in this video write me in comment. I will see you all in the next video till then stay safe and take care.